We've represented graphs using a vertex set V and an edge set E. The difficulty is that there aren't many things we can do with a set. Instead, we can represent a graph using the adjacency matrix. The adjacency matrix of a graph is the matrix A, where the ij entry is 1, for now, if there is an edge between vertices i and j, and 0 if there is no edge between the two vertices. And it's worth at least mentioning that at this point we've now joined the two main areas of discrete mathematics, namely linear algebra and graph theory. For example, let's consider this graph. Vertex 1 is joined to vertices 2, 3, and 5, so the second, third, and fifth entries in the first row should be 1, and the rest should be zeros. Vertex 2 is joined to vertex 1 and 4, so A21 and A24 are both 1, while the remaining entries in the row should be 0. Vertex 3 joins to vertex 1 and 5, so A31 and A35 are 1, and the rest of the entries are going to be 0. Vertex 4 joins to vertex 2 and 5, so A42 and A45 should be 1, and everything else 0. Finally, vertex 5 is joined to 1, 3, and 4, so the first, third, and fourth entries in the last row are 1, and the rest are 0. So, because we've now represented the graph as a matrix, we can then apply every tool of linear algebra. This opens up whole new realms of possibilities for what we can do with the graph. But we'll begin with a key feature of the adjacency matrix. Suppose M is the adjacency matrix for a graph G with V vertices. For any K, the ijth entry of M to power K is the number of distinct length K walks from I to J in G. For example, let's take a look at our graph, and we might want to find how many length 5 walks there are between vertices 1 and 4. So, remember we have the adjacency matrix, and because we're looking for length 5 walks, we want to find a to the 5th. Now we could find a to the 5th by multiplying a by a by a by a by a by, um, I've lost count. More efficiently, we can use the fast powering algorithm. This is based on the idea that it's just as easy to find the square of a matrix than it is to multiply two arbitrary matrices. And in particular, what we'll do is we'll repeatedly square our matrix. So we'll find a squared, the square of a squared, which is a to the fourth, the square of a to the fourth, which is a to the eighth, and so on. And if we want to find a to the n, we'll multiply the appropriate powers of a. So we find a squared, that's a multiplied by a, which gives us Now, a to the fourth will be a squared times a squared, and so we find Now, we have a, a squared, and a to the fourth, so now we can find a to the fifth, which will be a to the fourth times a, which will be And now we want a length 5 walk between vertices 1 and 4, so we find the a14 entry, which is 10, and so there are 10 length 5 walks between vertices 1 and 4. Now, just to keep my mathematician card current, let's go ahead and prove this theorem. And because we're doing a repeated multiplication, this is the type of thing we'll prove by induction. 
Clearly, the statement is true for n equals 1. Now, suppose the statement is true for n equals k. For convenience, we'll let a be m to the k plus 1. We'll let b equal m to the k and consider a i j the i j entry of a m to the power k plus 1, which is m to the k times m, or we'll call this b m. Trust me, if we try to do this any other way, we're going to drown in a sea of subscripts. So remember how we find the ij entry of a product of two matrices. We're going to take the components of the ith row of the first matrix, and so that'll be bi1, bi2, and so on, and then we'll multiply them by the components of the jth column of the second matrix. That's m1j, m2j, and so on. Now, by our induction hypothesis, bij is a number of walks from i to j with length k. So now let's consider this first addend. This is the number of walks from i to vertex 1 of length k times m1j. And remember, m1j is going to be 1 if there is an edge between vertex 1 and vertex j and 0 otherwise. So we can view this first add n as a number of walks from i to j that pass through vertex 1. Likewise, this second add n will be the number of walks from i to j that pass through vertex 2, and then the number of walks from i to j that pass through vertex 3, and so on. And so when we add them all together, their sum will be the number of walks from i to j, regardless of which vertex they pass through, and that proves our theorem. It's important to remember that we are computing the number of walks from i to j. But remember, a walk in a graph might repeat a vertex and might retrace an edge. So while a power of the adjacency matrix is useful, we might need to take additional steps to answer a combinatorial question. We'll take a look at that next.